Representative Jamie Becker Finn is the vice chair of the House Environment and Natural Resources Policy Committee. I spoke with her this week about how well the state is managing chronic wasting disease as we approach deer hunting season. I wanted to speak with you for a long time because you are an avid hunter. And so regarding deer hunting and chronic wasting disease, you bring, bring a unique perspective, both a personal one and a policy one. So from that joint perspective, how is Minnesota doing in managing chronic wasting disease? So the short answer is that we're doing better than we were previously, but there's still a lot more to do. Um, if For anyone who's familiar with chronic wasting disease, this isn't going to be an easy disease to tackle. Um, but I think particularly in the last two years, um, the DNR has really um, made some important steps and we've been able to make some important changes in the legislature, uh, both with funding and changing some policy issues to hopefully keep this disease in check. So last year, the legislature provided uh, funds for further research efforts at the University of Minnesota to develop more robust diagnostic tools, including, I think, the development of field tests. How is the research progressing right now? Um, we actually got really good news at our hearing yesterday. Uh, so Dr. Peter Larson at the University of Minnesota has really been the one leading the way on this and I can't say enough good things about um, him and his team and the work they've been putting putting into this. And so what they shared with us yesterday is that they are making important strides in um, a lot of it was really technical, but uh, essentially they've they're developing and getting closer to a test that uh, can um, essentially it's a much more sensitive test. So previously we had to have, um, in order to find the prions, we had to have um, brain tissue or spinal tissue, you know, areas where the, um, the prions were higher. And so this new test that they are working on would be able to detect it in saliva, blood, urine, um, or even the dirt. And it, so it's a much, much more uh, sensitive test and they are starting to invest in the equipment and moving forward on that. Um, obviously we'd still you know, be using their labs and such, but um, really important strides that we're making, um, really exciting stuff that's happening because right now um, hunters are having to find like specific tissue samples and they wait several days, if not weeks to get their results. And the turnaround on this more sensitive test is also much quicker. Um, still some technical issues to get it rolled out to the public, but um, things are looking really good. Have you heard anything specific from hunters who don't want to go through the rigmarole of testing a deer, so they just simply are not following the recommendations? Um, so obviously, I'm not hearing from most people um, because that would be, uh, you know, they would be following the law uh, if that's what they were doing. Uh, one important thing to note um, that we did hear from the DNR, and, and some of us had been given sort of a heads up uh, when they were sending the, the booklets. So you get a booklet every year uh, from the DNR with all your hunting rules and regulations in it. And because of COVID-19, they will not have staff out in the field um, testing hunter harvested deer. And so um, it's going to be voluntary this year and there will be essentially drop sites uh, throughout the impacted areas, the different zones that are considered CWD zones. And so we really are going to rely on hunters voluntarily complying with this. And um, another piece to that is that part of the work that um, some of the funds to the U of M uh, and the SIDRAP, uh, so the Center for Prion Research uh, and the work they're doing is um, they 3D printed a head of a deer with, so you can see the lymph nodes and they can really, and so the idea was hopefully they would be able to go out to the communities and show people, you know, really hands on what the samples are that they need. Um, so it'll be a little bit more challenging this year, but uh, we certainly are hearing from deer hunters that this is an important issue. And so, um, you know, most folks feel like it's worth it um, to make sure that we're, we're finding the disease and that um, hopefully we're not consuming it as well. Is it the goal then, because my understanding is these prions live in the environment for quite some time, is the goal really to just keep the spread under control as much as humanly possible? 
Yes, and I think, um, you know, we all uh, maybe now in COVID times have a little bit um, more nuanced understanding of disease, uh, disease control and how we manage disease. And so that's really what we're looking at is managing it. And, uh, you know, as I noted before, you know, the sort of the level of prions found in um, different tissues or the environment is also going to be really critical. Uh, for instance, in our the dumpster program that we started last year to make sure people are um, disposing of their deer carcasses, you know, the, the parts that they don't eat uh, safely, you know, it's probably, it, it's fine that that goes to a landfill. And, um, you know, in the grand scheme of how much else is in that landfill, you know, the chances that somebody's going to, or another animal is going to consume enough of uh, a deer part to get the disease uh, it is relatively rare, but that would be different than you eating a steak, a venison steak, um, you know, fresh from the from the field. So uh, it it's it's managing all of that and keeping it in check so it doesn't spread any further um, than than we can keep it from spreading. But yeah, the the chances that we are going to completely eradicate CWD um, at this point. Um, aren't looking too good, but I think that we really can keep it managed in a way that um, it's not negatively impacting your average hunter or average family or average Minnesotan who cares about the deer population. Now this coming budget year is going to be a challenge because of the projected deficit, meaning that those financial resources that any number of state agencies rely on are scarcer and scarcer. So as a lawmaker planning for you know reduced budget figures how important is it that funding remain for the management of chronic wasting disease uh, i i think it's still really important obviously uh everything that we're going to be trying to be funding next year is going to be really a challenge uh but i think there for a couple of reasons i think um you know, once this disease, if this disease were truly to get out of control, it would be really difficult, if not impossible, to sort of like force it back into the box. And so I think the timing is really critical because we are at a stage right now where, you know, in the last year, we've had three new positives show up in three different, or, you know, more than three, but three different counties that are now sort of on the radar of having to be managed uh, for chronic wasting disease, two of those from uh, you know, a, a deer farm situation. And so um, we're going to, we're going to have to find a way. And I think, um, you know, we're, we're probably going to have to get creative and overall in dealing with this problem, you know, we know that some of the positives are connected to um, kind of the for-profit farming sector. And those are managed through the Board of Animal Health, which is different than the DNR because the DNR is managing it as, as the wild deer population as a natural resource. However, um, they're the same species. And so they still can interact through a fence or uh, deer escape from their enclosures. And so we may be looking at, um, you know, we're all gonna have to work together to figure out how to pay for this. Um, I do think um, historically that hunters have borne most of the burden to manage this disease through uh, license sales. Uh, but the, the research that's currently going on at the U of M was actually funded through um, the through uh, the ENTRF. So um, the trust fund dollars or lottery mm -hmm. dollars paid for some of that. And right. so we do have some options here in Minnesota that other states may not have. Representative Jamie Becker Finn, that is all the time we have, but I want to thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me and thanks for paying attention to chronic wasting disease.